What's up guys, it's Jay, more than after kill, and I'm back here on Borderlands 2. And sometimes we all disagree with things. And when I disagree with something, I like to write a letter. And if I still feel that adamant about it, I take the letter and I read it to you guys. This is another episode of my open letters and I'm writing another open letter to Gearbox regarding Digistruct Peak and the level scaling in Borderlands 2. Now don't get me wrong before you get into this video, I do like Digistruct Peak, I think it is a great addition to the game, but I have a few ideas and opinions that maybe Gearbox might want to take into consideration or just get it off my chest and you guys can actually start a dialogue in the comments down below and let me know what you think of my ideas on how to make not only Borderlands 2 but Digistruct Peak just a little bit better for everybody. So without further ado, we're going to get right into the letter. Dear Randy Pitchford and Gearbox Studios, I'm making this video in an attempt to reason with you over the decisions your company has made recently in regards to your game Borderlands 2. Recently we've made contact over the issue of the broken kunai fix and I also saw that you personally addressed the issue of the incorrect hoplite scaling in the overpower and leveling from Digistruct Peaks DLC. Since you've been addressing these issues publicly lately, I figured I would take the time to go over some key points and issues that not only myself, but a lot of my subscribers have brought to my attention. So first, I would like to address some issues with the recent Digistruct Peak DLC. It's no secret that this DLC is designed for a difficult multiplayer experience. However, one of the biggest oversights is that when you're in game, you only show up as a level 72 on the main menu. With this new ability to overpower your playthrough, it's impossible to know which overpowered level, if any, the host of the lobby is played on until you join only to get your teeth kicked in by enemies that are way overpowered than what you are. As a solo player myself, I've actually felt the urges to join other people's games in an attempt to earn my overpowered level on every character that I play as. For all intents and purposes, your goal of achieving a more co-op oriented community is hindered by the fact that I can go through 10 lobbies and still never find one on the overpowered level that I'm comfortable playing on. Without some type of filter in the matchmaking browser, it is extremely difficult to find a game within a reasonable amount of time, which in my opinion is about 10 to 15 minutes and I could be lobby hopping all night long before I find a game that's actually suited to my overpowered level. The community is already divided between four different end game difficulties, one being True Vault Hunter Mode Level 50, Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode Level 61, Ultimate Vault Hunter Mode Level 72, and you have Overpowered Levels 1 through 8, three of which of these difficulties require two separate DLCs to access. In my recent exploration into the new adventure of joining multiplayer lobbies, I found myself completely turned off by the multiplayer due to the experience of trying to find a suitable lobby. Since my recent foray into finding multiplayer lobbies wasn't very satisfying, I decided to go back and grind it out solo. Since playing, I've noticed a few things that really don't make any sense. The most notable is the insane health regenerations of enemies in game. And I'm not talking about the surveyors regenerate the health of enemies. That I actually thought was pretty cool and it actually made sense since all the enemies are digestructed that a surveyor can regenerate their health. What I'm talking about is on more than one occasion I was shooting enemies and it almost seems like my bullets were healing them because they were regenerating health while I was shooting them. Now I don't have a problem with the speed and the amount of regeneration, that is fine, but please allow some type of buffer to where the enemies won't regenerate their health while I'm still attacking them. It makes no sense at all and it leaves me scratching my head, especially when I'm in fight for your life. Now, another thing that makes no sense is that overpowered level 8 Kriegs, his silence the voices skill does 90% damage to his health, which means that Silence the Voice procs is a 90% certain death. Any Krieg melee player can tell you 
that silence the voices when you spec into it will happen and it will happen again and again and again and again and again. This is an issue that is breaking a character in the game and it's totally unacceptable. The fact that it's happening on a DLC character is even more unacceptable. Silence the voices happens way too often for the scale to be 90% on a self-inflicted damage. That has to be incorrect. Please Gearbox, take a look at that. But also, the skill needs an internal cooldown so it doesn't happen repeatedly in a row. Because trust me, I have silenced the voices until I died. Now, another thing that makes no sense is the health and level scaling in this game. I know the DLC is meant to be difficult, I don't have a problem with that, but even the most hardcore Volt Hunters out there will tell you that to be able to cause any damage, you're pigeonholed into using a B with weapons like the Unkempt Herald and Sandhawk at overpower level 8. Only one of those guns is actually in the vanilla game, the Sandhawk you actually have to buy Captain Scarlet's DLC to get the Sandhawk. However, it is superior, so I don't have a problem like that. But unless you're a Gunzerker, you find yourself not being able to use any other weapons besides these two. And even the Gunzerker is still limited in the amount of weapons that are effective on overpower level 8. Now, I remember back in November, the B was nerfed for multiple projectile damage values because it was over effective and it was devolving the community into one weapon and one shield combination. And Gearbox, you personally took a stand and said that you did not want this, you wanted people to use variety within this game. Now, the same thing happens at overpower level 6 through 8. None of the weapons in the game are effective enough to be even remotely relevant. Now, like I said, I understand the overpower levels are supposed to be the upper echelon of multiplayer cooperation and supposed to be extremely difficult, but you can see the relevance of how these new difficulty levels are once again diluting the community to the same old combinations that we once had. This Sandhawk and the Unkempt Herald are only this effective because they have multiple projectiles that aren't listed on the damage card. Therefore, each pellet is amped by the B at the same time, rather than being divided by its number of projectiles. It was your stance last year that the B was in fact broken and operating incorrectly because of this. The last 10 months, the community has widely regarded the use of the Unkempt Herald and the Sandhawk with the B as an exploitation of a glitch that made it past your quality control. But now, it's become the only viable solution to making it through the top overpowered levels. This is a problem due to the scaling of the player health and damage in comparison to the enemy's health and damage, which is on an extremely disproportionate curve to say the least. We've held on to hope that you guys would rescale the game before Digistruct Peak and the DLC level 72 cap upgrade was released, but it didn't happen. And over time, we've learned to deal with the fact that shields are a placebo and your health doesn't matter as long as you're above your 50% health gate. I realize that this is an extremely huge undertaking to rescale the game after release, which gave me the idea that instead of rescaling the game and overpower levels are still difficult even with the Herald, Sandhawk, and B combination, the best temporary solution to the scaling issues would be to unnerf the B and bring it back in all its full glory. Since you guys have no more problems with players being overpowered in their own game, why not throw us a bone that would make a few more weapons useful in our quest to become overpowered level 8? It would make at least 20 to 30 more weapons viable in the game at that level and promote more variety in players' builds while making it through Digistruct Peak at the top tiers. That's right, the very issue that the B nerf solved that's happening again can be solved by unnerfing the B. <laughs> that's, that's irony at its best. So I want to thank you guys for watching. My name is Jay. More than the after kill, make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. 
I want to thank you guys for watching. If you could leave a thumbs up on the video, I would highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for you motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. These are just a few things that I've noticed in Digistruct Peak that I think could make a little bit change for the better, even though I still think it is a pretty good DLC and it's worth $5. I would just like to see it made a little bit more accessible to multiplayer and getting more people in your game, seeing what levels they are, and also fixing Krieg. So, my name is Jay, one and after kill. Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys later.